Hello, my name is Tyler Carter, and today I'll be talking about the regulation of the complement system. The complement system is extremely important to the host. It increases the efficiency of the immune system, hence the name complement system. It complements the immune system. However, the complement system can also grow, pose great risks and a threat can be a threat, a danger to the host organism. Uh, and it can do this by through opsonins latching onto a host cell and marking that host cell for death, uh, even though that host cell isn't meant to die. So this can cause tissue damage, cause organ damage. It can cause potentially fatal amounts of harm to a host organism because it causes the immune system to turn on the host. Also, the complement system, a large part of it, is releasing anaphylatoxins. <clears throat> And these cause the inflammatory response by causing specific immune cells to degranulate. <clears throat> now, this causes now, if degranulation is widespread and unchecked, it can cause shock-like symptoms in the host, which shock can be potentially fatal. Uh, two large reasons, or nat it's more natural ability of the body to regulate the complement system would be cell surface composition and component instability. So complement components are naturally unstable and these components have very short half-lives. So this C5 convertase from the alternative pathway only has a half-life of five minutes. Now C5 convert the formation of C5 convertase is generally an end sort of an end to the uh, complement systems activity is because once uh, C5 convertase is formed, it starts cleaving C5 into its uh, two components, smaller components, which C5A, which is an anaphylatoxin that causes an inflammatory response, and C5B, which is essential to creating these MACs. And if the fact that this C5 convertase has such a short half-life means that it's not going to be able to cleave many C5 molecules before it disappears. This is an innate way that the complement system regulates itself. Host cells also have a very different surface carbohydrate composition than microbial cells. So host cells have a high concentration of sialic acid and this allows proteases that are necessary to destroy C3B to thrive. So if C3B is lands on a host cell and wants to opsonize it, then before it can cause any like real damage, the proteases will attack the C3B. But on a microbial cell, these proteases don't exist. It's another innate way that cells defend against the complement system. There's also C1INH, and it is a plasma protein and serine protease inhibitor. It binds active sites of serine proteases and poisons them. It could form a complex with C1R2S2, which causes the molecule to break off from C1Q, and this prevents activation of C2 and C4. This is important because C2 and C4 are essential into making C3 convertases, which cause, <clears throat> which cause C3 to split into its two components, C3A and C3B. And C3B is an opsonin, C3A an anaphylatoxin, again, regulating the release of these kinds of molecules. It also inhibits MASP2 of the lectin pathway, which is the most one of the most important components of this pathway. Uh, C1INH is the only regulatory protein that inhibits both the lectin and classical pathways. There's also DAF. Now, DAF is the decay accelerating factor, and it accelerates the decay of C3 convertase, as is in the name. It requires two cofactors, CR1 and C4BP. It breaks down C3 convertase into its components, C2A and C4B. C2A is inactive on its own, so it's just left by the body to decay, but C4B has to be degraded by factor I. Factor H takes the place of C4BP in the alternative pathway. So C3B, BB, or that is the C3 convertase of the alternative pathway, is split into its two components, BB and C3B. And 
BB decays much like C2A while C3B is degraded. <clears throat> factor I. Factor I is very important because it is a soluble serine protease, protease that is always active. It can cleave C3B and C4B into their inactive fragments. Now, the fact that factor I is always active means that it would it can't just run around and cleave C3B and C4B wherever it finds it. It needs to have some way of recognizing when it needs to cleave these molecules or else it's going to render the complement system in, inactive. It's going to be inefficient and ineffective. So to, to make up for this, it requires cofactors, MCP, CR1, and either factor H or C4BP, depending on the pathway, to do these things. <clears throat> Now, these cofactors aren't found on microbial cells, so it, they're selective to host cells. So that means that one of these fragments, C3B or C4B, these molecules, lands on a host cell. Factor I, these cofactors help Factor I uh, recognize these molecules, and then Factor I is able to understand that it needs to cleave them. Uh, also, MCP, one of the cofactors, has been found to play a role in T cell apoptosis control. So, MCP being present stops the cell from undergoing apoptosis, but as soon as MCP is lost, uh, C3B will begin opsonization of that T cell, will mark it for death. Protectin. Protectin prevents MACs from destroying host cells. It binds the complex and prevents it from inserting itself into the membrane. <laughs> so if one of these MACs wants to insert itself into a host cell membrane, protectin stops it so it can't harm the cell. Protectin also prevents C9 addition into developing MACs, and then S protein binds fluid phase, fluid phase C5, B67, and prevents its insertion into the host cell membrane. Very similar to what protectin does. Carboxypeptidases. Carboxypeptidases cleave C-terminal arginine residues from C3A and C5A. So they cleave this amino acid, these amino acid residues, and that causes inactivation of the anaphylatoxins. So the specific carb carboxypeptidases involved in this process are, co are co carboxypeptidases N, B, and R. They remove arginine residues from the carboxyl termini of C3A and C5A. This puts C3A and C5A into their inactive forms. Uh, C5A can also be bound by C5L2 to regulate its inflammatory activity. So, in a sense, carboxypeptidases remove arginine residues, render C3A and C5A inactive so that they can't cause any more inflama inflammation. They can't continue the inflammatory response. Stops these molecules or these enzymes cause or basically cause or stop shock from happening in the, in the host organism. Thank you.